line at pick seven. I feel like that's optimistic, but it's it's in the range of possibility for him. I think this is going to be a Marco Casper pick for Detroit. I can't even open my phone right now. I couldn't. <laughs> I think this has to be Marco Casper. I can't imagine it being anyone other than Marco Casper for Detroit. I can imagine it. Sorry, being... I, that, that's dramatic. Yeah, I, I didn't. Just... I didn't think Casper was going to be here for this pick. He's not Swedish, which is a knock against him when it comes to Detroit picks. His name kind of sounds Swedish. Uh, he, he played in Sweden, so that that plays in his favor. Sorry, I shouldn't say I can't imagine anyone else other than Marco Casper. I'm just thinking for how much Casper fits the bill, and he's a centerman. Yeah. Oh, for what? Again, for the the three things that we have noticed over time that Eisman tends to look for in his draft picks, he checks those boxes. Fast, competitive, skilled. Is there? Is he the most skilled players player available here? No. Is he the most competitive player here? Maybe actually, yes. Is he the fastest player here? No. So, like, if Eisman wants the most competitive player available at this pick, it's Casper. If he wants the most skilled player available at this pick, it's Savoy. If he wants the fastest player available at this pick, it's Nazer. If he wants the best goal scorer here, Kamel or LeCaramacchi, take your flip a coin. So there, there's a lot of options available here. If he wants the best defenseman available, Minchikov's there. If they're really set on Osland, they might still be taking Osland. They could take Osland uh, again for a lot of the reasons I like Frank Nazar. They apply to Noah Osland. I think if you're Detroit right now, you start looking back at trade down options. See who's the only see thing who's excited to move up. I agree with that. The only thing working against that though is uh, everybody, the, else, everybody else is going. Well, we're going to get someone great here. Why are we giving an asset to move up? Yeah, the well, the, the margin in the next. 12-ish picks is so thin. All right. Think about it, though. If you're a team in the 20s, I don't know if I want to tra- trade back that far. <laughs> if you want Osla, if you don't think there's a huge difference. Connor be- McDavid for number eight. Who says no? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Me, because I never want your memes to be dreams, Evan. You, you Pick f- is in. Detroit's you pick is in. You shall refer to me as Nostra Log Singer, by the way. <laughs> no, absolutely not. You didn't get the pick right. The pick is in, so they're not trading it. They're staying. Okay. Detroit's pick is in. I don't want to hear any names. I don't want to know anything. I just want Stevie to walk up to the stage and say four words so the, this last year's speculation can end. Detroit keeps their pick. Oh, boy. All right, folks, get your predictions in the chat. That's a good way to not spoil it. Just have a million names in there. <laughs> Still not looking at it. Oh, man. Right. This could be so many guys. This is what we talk about. I don't about, even though. have a good guess. That's the crazy thing. I've got at least six or seven names rattling around my head that I give equal chance here. That's Which is crazy. Ryan Parks, thank you for the donation, says, Give me Nazer. Casper, Savoy, Nazer, Casper, Kamel, Lakaramaki, like they could think Kemmel. Ostland if you if the if the rumors are to be believed. Geeky is there, whether you like it or not. Yeah. Geeky is there. Here we go. There's Steve with the jersey. We're coming up on the Red Wings pick. Yeah, that actually is a good way to uh, to stop the spoilers, have everyone just make their predictions. The Red Wings are taking the stage. We're getting closer to that eighth overall pick. Batman's about right, This to... guy's got to stop talking because Osman usually doesn't waste time. No. Marco, Marco Casper. Casper. There it is. Yep. There. I don't. I don't hate it. I like it. Marco Casper like it. is the new future at center alongside Dylan Car- uh, Dylan Larkin for the Detroit Red Wings. They just filled the biggest need for their organization. Yeah. He f- he checks every box that Steve Eisman yep. looks for. Whether he was the most popular pick or not, he is absolutely not an insane pick at eighth overall. They got their guy. My ninth ranked prospect, so not a reach. Yeah. I, I Honestly, I didn't think he was going to be here. Based yeah. on all the rumors and, and chatter leading up to the draft, I thought he was going to be gone before this pick. Mind you, that was before Ottawa traded. Seventh overall, which yeah. probably is why this happened. Um, 
Big props to Steve Eisman for not wasting time when he got to the mic. I love it. I respect the hell out of it. All right, let's talk a little bit. A guy bit. who, like I said, a guy who checks all the boxes for what the Red Wings look for in a player, and he is at their biggest position in need. And you can absolutely justify best player available here. Again, not my personal best player available, but right in the range. So I, I, I think it's a really, really good pick. And we talk about the Swedish connection, not because he's Swedish, he's not, he's Austrian, but played in the SHL. Hakan Anderson leads one of the most dominant European scouting groups in hockey. They would have all, all of the information on Marco Casper. And you know nobody would have a better uh, kind of line on how those European prospects are doing. Evan, your take on grabbing Marco Casper, especially considering the players on the board there? Um, I, he, in our draft preview, I was very down on Marco Casper. And I continue, I will not pretend to now all of a sudden be a Marco Casper truther. Uh, if anybody needs to get memed on this podcast, it's still me. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to be a revisionist of history. I am not a big fan of Marco Casper. I don't think he's got the offensive upside. I think if he doesn't find it, he's a third third line center at best. So you think his his, not his ultimate ceiling, but his likely landing spot is third line center at best? I don't think his if he hits a ceiling he's a he's a good second line center I think my from my perspective he most likely positioned for him in the NHL is third line center. All right, Brad, walk us through Marco Casper's detailed player profile here as we know it now. So again, one of Marco Casper's biggest traits that everybody raves about and I know it's an intangible and everybody rolls their eyes when you hear it but it's compete. This guy is the guy above everybody else in this draft to run through a brick wall to win a game, to score a goal, to get a rebound for you. Like, that is his profile. He's not the fastest player in the draft, but he is. his speed is above average. He can skate. He's not a flashy player, which is kind of what why I had to come around on him as the year went on. Because you see the stuff that, you know, some of the other guys in this draft can do with the puck in terms of, you know, hands and, and dangles. And that's not Casper's game. Not that, again, they're below average. He finds the efficient ways to make plays. He he doesn't do anything fancy, but what he does is super effective. He can get the puck to the net, he can distribute the puck, and he can win battles. So there's, there's nothing in the 200-foot game of hockey that he sucks at. He is above average in just about every single facet, the argument against Casper is he's a lead at none of them outside of being like that highly, highly competitive player. But like we talked about with the comparisons to Larkin, there's room for improvement. Like he's at an age with a guy where you've got this unbelievable foundation. And that's probably the biggest compliment I can get to Casper. He probably has one of the best foundations to work with in this draft. So if you can get his offense up a little bit, if you can get his playmaking, his hands up a little bit, you could have an elite player here. I think ultimately he probably settles in as, as a second line center, which is great, which is what the Red Wings at eighth overall. Yeah. That's fantastic. I don't think he'll be as good as Larkin, although it's within the range of possibility, but he, he's going to check a lot of boxes for what the wings need. He'll be able to play five on five effectively penalty kill effectively power play effectively. Again, this guy can do everything. That is the, that is his calling card. That is the hallmark of Marco Casper's game. So we, Marco Casper was one of the players we revisited. And that's because, you know, a lot of what Brad just talked about in terms of the he does everything wasn't really appreciated because, and I'll still maintain this, agreeing with Evan, I'm not going to try to be a revisionist here. His, the, the high end, the overall talent level, I don't think it's the same as a, uh, a Matt Savoy or some of the other players on the board. But considering what the Red Wings look for, they look for tenacity. They look for guys who give, you know, 120% every shift on the ice. He plays center. He's not afraid to, you know, drive the middle, play hard. The guy's a uh, pinball might be, you know, reductive of him based on the physical impact he makes in every shift out there. Uh, and he's also able to to kind of do so in a way that does generate offense to a level of a first line center. No, I, I'd have to agree with Brad as it is right now. You think who is that Eisman is talking to? Is that the Arizona table? What was he? Could just, have had Shane Wright. Maybe he was just congratulating them, or maybe Eisman was saying, "Hey, I took a good, uh, good crack at taking your pick from you." 
But Marco Casper was was drafted to fit a role, and that's the Red Wings having another top six center. They're going to have to hope that his offensive upside is unlocked a little bit more than what uh, the scouting on him is. But the way he plays the game responsibly 200 feet and is uh, able to do so, it's almost throwback hockey, eh? Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. He he named Matthew Kachuk as a player he tries to model his game after, and I can absolutely see that. Yeah, I, in, in all in all for me, the Casper pick should be expected. Nazar wasn't likely, and if they didn't view Savoy as a center, then Casper is the pick for them. So for a shocking draft where everything was going absolutely bananas... If you asked me before today, I would have said Savoy isn't going to make it, or sorry, Casper's not going to make it to eight. But the fact that he did, Ottawa got out of the way and Chicago went with Korchinski, it made it put him there. And I'm sure that was an automatic pick for Eisenman. They said, yep, that's that's our guy. So I wouldn't call Detroit center depth deep still. So if they wanted to pick another center, great. If they wanted to go D wing, it's it's all justifiable here. I'm taking Owen back. There, yeah. There's. There's also a question of look what the Red Wings got in in uh, Moritz Sider, right? He was a player whose offensive upside was being questioned, and they knew there was more there. Eisenman said that Marco Casper's offensive skills being underrated, and if that's the case, if Marco Casper's offensive ceiling is higher than we've actually seen, then that's a pick you have to understand is probably oh, as yeah. good as Cutter Gauthier at five. One. Hey, and if Marco Casper can speak German. <laughs> That's Kenny, great. actually? Oh, Austria, maybe, that maybe. would make sense. Yeah, yeah, quite possibly. So, he's Casper stays in Sweden? Probably. I would imagine so. We'll see what uh, Eisman and the Red Wings say, but that's Marco Casper to the Red Wings. Uh, in I all am, honesty... I'm eight for nine. In all, uh, someone was like, Marco Casper, not a bad pick. Um, when you but meant, he, but when, he, they said he wasn't in any of your top three. We named three players in one of the widest drafts I in the NHL history. Ryan can justify this. When he asked me for mine, I said I'm not putting Casper because I don't think he'll be there. Yeah, I have proof of that. So, um, Dean A, thank you for the donation. Says it's a Hakan Anderson pick, and that excites me. That's great justification. Brian mm-hmm. Cullen, thank you for the donation. He says don't hate it. Good size doesn't hurt. Perhaps Pav Junior is in this draft tomorrow. Let's go Red Wings. Three, three years in a row drafting out of Sweden with the first pick. Hasn't gone wrong for them yet. No, it has not. Even Edvinson, who, you know, okay, actually, let's look at an analog here. Not positionally, but we loved other players. Edvinson was on the board. I think, Evan, you were big on Edvinson. Yeah. Um, I was the only one to have him in my top three. Yeah, you did. Or preferred picks. But he was within three of on my board when they picked him. They took Edvinson, and there were other highly talented players on the board. But you know what? There's no, there's no kind of persistent like what's going to happen with this center position now there's no kind of what do we have other than dylan larkin you can now assume all going well that it's dylan larkin marco casper and then so that's your top six centers the team can now fill out the rest uh much appreciated does casper project as a two-way guy from ryan Britt? yeah yeah that's one of his calling cards absolutely casper is going to be responsible on both ends of the ice and is actually mature at both ends of the ice already right now. Um, Talk a little bit, Brad and Evan, if you can, I have to do a couple things here. Talk a little bit about where Marco Casper is on the timeline. Some more detail about his game and his progression in his career, junior career so far. He's going to be fascinating because on, on pure skill alone, I would say probably two years away. But with the fundamentals of his game being so strong, he could be a guy that spends one more year in the SHL and then jumps to the to the NHL. I don't know if he'll need the AHL seasoning. Um, obviously, this upcoming season will be the biggest um, hint as to where he's going to end up the year after. But yeah, I think he probably goes back to Rogla for another year. Um, and again, for him, it's... Normally, you try to teach guys at this point how to play the game, quote unquote, the right way. And you just try to get them to use their talent in the most efficient ways as possible. Casper is there. Yeah. The The instruction for him this year is, hey, get better. Just improve. He's not going to be on yeah. the team next, like, yeah. next year. So yeah, just go learn to shoot the puck a little harder, skate a little faster, get your hands a little quicker. Just get better. Like, which is sounds like an insult, but it's nice and simple. 
Oh, yeah. uh, Evan, your thoughts on Casper's timeline and what the Red Wings need from him? Well, it won't be this year. I'll say that. He, I don't think he's making bold. the Red Wings out of camp. Very believe bold. Believe it or not. Um, I think he'll head back to Rogla. And like Brad said, like I think he's closer to making the NHL than a lot of guys are in the top 10. Um, so with that being said, one more year over in Rogla, see how he looks after that camp in, in Detroit and make a decision there. Um, that is a long ways away, and a lot of things can change at that point in time. Um, but I'd say he's at least a year away. Um, um, question here from Red Wings fan. says, you guys are good with Casper over Savoy. Just wondering. Yeah, I, we've talked about this a lot. There are preferred picks in this draft, but this is the most wide-open draft in a long, long time. Like we were saying, it's this is the most wide-open draft in a long time. And it's... Even if it wasn't, you only have to look as far back as the more insider draft. There are a wider group of players than you can appreciate who are viable at any given pick, especially when you get down there towards the sixes and the eights, the tens of picks. So at eighth overall, unless it was anyone from year check up, I was pretty okay with the, the swath of picks. The only players who I was like, you run to the podium were those top six who went. It was a top four for me, honestly. Like you wouldn't run to the podium for Gochia or your or your check over Gochia. Gochia was my eighth ranked prospect. Casper was my ninth. Yeah. So like I <laughs> minimal difference there. I wouldn't. Uh, your check was six on the board for me. Uh, I mean, with Casper, was he my preferred pick there? With who was left on the board? No, I still had Savoy and Nazar higher on my board. But obviously, I, I'm a little bullish on Nazar. I know consensus he was way below the Red Wings pick. So you know, obviously taking that into account. The Red Wings picked eight. Casper was my ninth ranked prospect. How could I be upset about that? Again, not my preferred pick, but he was in my top three of who was available at that pick based on my board. Um, yeah, so I, I really like the pick. Again, the thing with Casper over the two guys that I had ranked ahead of Detroit is he fits Eiserman's profile better than the two guys I personally liked better. Because the, 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 the two guys I liked... Were, were, were small TM. They, they were not the biggest of, biggest guys in the world. And I think Casper's, what, 6'1"? What? What, yeah, he's, he's got the size. He's got the frame for, for yeah. the Eisenman kind of prototype. That's a, he has one trust. Like, you look yeah, at the he swings, has. With, with Cider, obviously, he's the biggest one. But even look with Edmondson and Raymond, how much that's turned out. And then yeah. what that Swedish group over there. Oh, there's no done. conversation. My board lined up with Raymond. Oh, yeah, the Raymond pick was fantastic. <laughs> but Edmondson was was in range for me, like Casper. Wasn't my preferred pick at the time. If we went back and redrafted that the way it went, yeah, you probably take Edmondson. So how can I? Uh, I want to read out Prashant's tweet here on Casper because I think it's a really good summary. <clears throat> Casper is a high-motor center that plays a very strong north-south game, was well-supported in Rogla, and had a strong postseason. I do wonder if the offensive upside is there, but I think he has a high floor. That last comment, the high floor, yeah, to me... That's for those of you who are like, well, you weren't over the moon about Casper. That high floor to me is exactly why, even if I had Casper way lower on my board. And I think we, when we came around on Casper, we, we did the revisit and we talked about why he probably didn't get enough credit to start. That's why he's not only like a, you can't hate the pick, but you kind of have to like it to get a player who can hopefully nothing's guaranteed, but land as your second line center. In my mind, if he has a good shot to land as your second line center and you got that with an eighth overall pick in a draft where that kind of talent sometimes isn't actually a lot of drafts that talent isn't there, you can't hate that pick. My my range on Casper, honestly, from what I think, I think his floor is third line center and his peak is second line center. You think it's we, that tight of a range? I think we have a really good idea of what Marco Casper is. It's just gonna be is he a, a top tier second line center or is he kind of like a eh, he he can do the job. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like, if things go really poorly for him, yeah, he's probably a third line center that can kill penalties for you and maybe do spot duty on the power play and the second line with injuries, right? Yeah, that would be a bit disappointing. You'd want more. 